everybody. Welcome to another episode of CBTV Workshops. I'm here. My, my name is Carlos, your host, and your host also, Dave Dakin from Coral View. How are you, Dave? Doing good today, man. How's it going? That's doing well. I'm doing well. You know, the temperature here in Chicago, it broke 60, so it's flip-flops and t-shirts today. Springtime, huh? It's springtime, and I was I was very thrilled about it. So how is the weather down in New Orleans today? Yeah, we're warming up as well. We're hitting in mid-70s, so <laughs> summer will be here before we know it. <laughs> That is correct. You know, before we move on and, and start this show, I want to say thank you to the early viewers here. We have Connor Sloan coming in from Chicago. We have San Sean Stewart, Matt Young, Dan Swenson, Wendy. God, we love Wendy here. Jonathan Kenyar and, uh, you know, um, uh, Dupree Stewart. Thank you so much for joining us. I think you guys are going to like the show today. It's not a very fancy show. It's not going to be something that, um, you know, it's going to be very technical, but I think it's going to be something that's going to help a lot of viewers, you know, live viewers and also the viewers that are going to watch the recording because we're going to go over each of the control devices for the hydros and explain what the differences are and what they do and what they cannot do. Um, uh, which I think it's been some some of the most asked questions online that we have had, right, Dave? Yeah, 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 definitely. You know, Carlos, this is we've been selling this uh, out on the market now for about four months, and and I think a lot of people are, are kind of leaning in now, like, hey, doesn't look like these guys are going anywhere. Maybe maybe some they're on to something. Maybe there's another option out there for controllability for our aquariums and. And we kind of just wanted to run through the product line again of what we currently have and, uh, and, and kind of maybe answer some questions to where there's some confusion or, or misinformation in terms of what hydros can can do and what we have available at this time. So that, exactly. that's kind of what we wanted to start with today. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So. If you guys like the show, if you guys enjoy watching the show and learn something from the workshop, we urge you, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell. We are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. So if you don't like Facebook, we got YouTube. If you don't like YouTube, we got Facebook. We got you covered. So please just sign up to the subscription right there and put your, you know, hit that bell, hit the subscribe button. And then anytime we have a new live show, you will be notified right away. Hey, you know, you're at work. Uh, you know what? You're getting your vaccine. You're waiting in line. You got your phone on, you got your earphones and I'm, and we, you know, Dave and I are keeping you company here. So first of all, thank you for getting the vaccine. And second of all, Hey, you know, what? instead of standing, looking at other people, you can, you can look at us and, and learn something in the, in the process. So uh, we like that. Also, I want to make sure I, gotta, I want to give a give shout out to our hydros, our Coral View Hydros Forum. And that is one of the best sources of information that you will find. I know it's a hidden little gem that we have there and we try to advertise it. Um, uh, yes, we don't have 11,000 members out there. We only have about 200 right now, which is fine. But you know what? If you go there, you're gonna get one-to-one -one help. Plus out of the 11,000, how many actually trolls? <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, so we, we try to keep our membership very very close and our forum very very tight so there are not uh, that many bots in there that uh, that want to sign up you'd be amazed how many how many bots we reject every single day on our forum you know that if we let it go it would just balloon our you know we would have thousands of users right now if we let that go so anyway please the latest information that you're going to find about the hydros devices are is going to be found at forum.coralviewhydros.com. And the reason why, I'm gonna give you a good reason why you want the forum instead of Facebook. And the simple reason is that in Facebook, it's incredibly hard to search. If you try to find the, if, so if you have a question and you're trying to find the answer on Facebook, it's very difficult to go and search and try to find if somebody else has already asked the question and somebody posted an answer. But if you go to the forum.coralviewhydros.com, it's an easy search and most likely somebody already answered the question for you or we have a subject that we've covered with the information that you need so always try to go to forum.coralviewhydros.com and that will be the latest source of information you find so dave we are going to cover today controls and the differences between them right yes yeah. yeah so you know currently the the lineup looks like this it's uh it's wave engine 
um, mm -hmm. Control 4, Control 2, and the latest is the Control XS. And, you know, the biggest thing to think about with, with what we're doing is, is that each device is its own brain. You know, this, this group that we have, each individual device can take over for the other. So by having these multiple brains, you create redundancy. So that's mm -hmm. the first thing we, we've tried to, to think a little bit outside the box. And, and with these devices, each one does different functions, but some of them do the same. Uh, some of them, such as if you would purchase a Control 4, for instance, and you see you have these uh, sense ports and you would like to have more sense ports. Instead of going out and purchasing another Control 4, we developed Control XS. Or you could actually add a Control uh, 2. It depends on what you want to do. So you want to think, what do I want to control? And and how, where do I want to have an entry point from in terms of price point? Um, so we give you multiple points of entry into this Hydro's world. There really is no bad or wrong entry uh, because everything we want to create, we want you to be able to take it with you um, as you expand your system or you purchase another aquarium, a larger aquarium, you need more controllability. We want you to take it with you. We don't want you to feel like we're going to put this out and next year we're going to release another model. And oh, by the way, the stuff you purchase doesn't no longer work with it. So you got to buy some additional. We don't want that. We want to create this environment where we bring the system with you. And, uh, and, and that's really, you know, trying to think outside the box, trying to make uh, control for everybody. And that's, uh, that's, that's kind of what we, we're doing. There's a lot more to come. I really wish we had more out already. Um, unfortunately, supply chain has, has been brutal with this whole COVID thing, but um, we're getting there. Carlos, it's only four months in, but I, I think people are leaning in and seeing what we're doing and, and, uh, and, and been pretty pleased with the responses so far. Yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe we can do, you know, discuss a little bit more about there's some confusion of what these sense ports actually are. Yeah. So I was going to bring that up. It's like, let's, let's break it down to basics because at the end of the day, that's what the basic is. Yeah. Hydros is the Hydros controllers have literally uh, different types of ports. So all the controllers have different types of ports. So they have sense ports, they have drive ports, they have zero to 10 ports. So each controller, each of the four, each of the four, um, each of the three controllers that we have there, the difference is what ports come with it. But before we talk about the controller, let's talk about the ports themselves because we have to understand what is, what are the ports. So let's start with the sense port. Okay, which is one of the easiest ones. All right, a sense port is the green one, and it's there, right there. It's a green, it's a green port. What is a sense port? A sense, in true terms, is something that allows the control to sense, to take an input, to get data. It doesn't mean it's going to do anything with that information. It's just providing information. That's what it is. So something like a temperature information is the temperature is 78 degrees. Now, what do you do with that data? What do you do with 78 degrees? Then that's something you do separate from the sense port. But the sense port itself just tells you, hey, it's 78 degrees. Hey, uh, I detect water, a leak detector. Hey, the water, you know, I detect water. That's a water sensor, you know, a float switch. That's what a sense port is, okay? That's a sense port. This next sense, the next port that the controllers have is the probe port. And I think that's one of the biggest things that people have the misconception or the, the misunderstanding that a sense port and a probe port are the same. And that is not correct. A probe port is two things. There's only two things that work on a probe port. That's a pH probe, in a or in an ORP probe. That is it. Nothing else would work in that probe to make it clear. So a sense port 
is not a probe port, which means by definition, you cannot attach a probe to a sense port. You cannot attach a sensor to a probe port. All right. So if you have a pH probe or an ORP probe, you cannot put them on the green ports. And I'm going to ask our um, uh, our producers, um, uh, April, right now, to put that picture back again of our sense ports right there. And that's why we made we tried when we sat down in here when Dave and the entire Coralview team tried to sit down and and try to figure out how we're going to do this. You know, something as simple as colors it makes a huge difference. So if you have a green wire color. It only goes on a green pro uh, on, on a green input. That's it on a green jack. Um, um, so you'll see all sense ports come the 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 bottom the the base of the cable is green, matching the green of the sense port. Same thing with the probes. The probes go to blue. Make sense? So there, Dave is showing that as if they can zoom in a little bit right there. You can see that that is a leak detector and you can see, I mean, you can barely see. Oh yeah, there you go, Dave, that's perfect. You can see that there is a green cable at the base of that GX12 that shows you what it is. Same thing with the port. Let's go back to the picture with the sense ports because it also has a picture of the probes right there too. All right, and that picture right there shows you the probes, there's only two probes, that's pH and ORP. And you can physically see it, physically see it. There is no way to connect a pH port to one of the green ports in there. It just doesn't match. Even if you tried, you're not gonna be able to do it, okay? So a sense port is temperature, water level, leak detector. A probe port is pH and ORP. So the next probe we have, the next port we have is a drive port, and that is orange. And a drive port is anything that is 12 volts, 12 volts. That's what it is. And you can see right there, I, and, and I, I, I love this picture because it shows you different, the differences between the ports. Look how the green port has four pins, while the drive port only has two. So not only are we making sure that you are matching the color, but also we are preventing you by making the, 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 the port physically different from connecting the wrong thing to the wrong port and possibly destroying the sensor or destroying the, the pump or whatever you're connecting to it. So a drive port is orange and it's for pumps, for, um, um, uh, for lights, for little things that, for little things that, that, that consume only 12 volts. Yeah, actually, Carlos, I'm running some some LED lights uh, for refugium from my exactly. ports. And, you know, uh, we don't have some of these things out yet, but it's just a little window into things that we are working on and and what you can do with these uh, with this drive port in terms of power. Absolutely. And you know what? This is one of the things that I'm going to say right now. If you go to forum.coralviewhydros.com and go to the DIY section, oh my God, there are a bunch of things in there that I've done. I mean, uh, Jeff Benedict has done a fantastic job of creating images and pictures of the pinout. If, you, if you're a little bit handy, you could actually make your own cable and connect your 12 volt device to it and run it on the drive board. I mean, that's how easy it is. So again, you just have to have the correct pinout, but we're trying to make it as easy. So, okay, so the things that are in, the things that the port, that the devices have in common are sense ports, pro ports, drive ports. Now we go on to zero to 10 volt ports. And I'm gonna show right there. So zero to 10 volt ports is a universal communication between controllers, between devices. It sends out, think of, think of zero to 10 volts as your master volume control on your big sound system. And um, what it does is it sends voltage from zero to 10, meaning the ramps up and ramp down. So if you send one volt, the pump will run at one speed. If you send two volts, the pump will up the speed and three volts and so forth. So zero to 10 is a very basic yet universal way of controlling devices that have that input. So if you're looking for a light that is gonna work with the hydro system, if you're looking for a pump that is gonna, look, that is gonna work with the hydro system, then you know if they don't connect directly to the wave engine you know, then what you could do is make sure that they have a zero to 10 volt port in, and that's how they communicate to each other. So the controller sends one volt, 
the light receives one volt and the light runs at 10%. If you want to run it as 50%, the controller just sends 50, I'm sorry, uh, 0.5 volts and, uh, you know, and, uh, excuse my, my terminology in there, but you just send 0.5 and then it will go to 50%. So you can see where the zero to 10 volt port works at the advantage of universal controlling a lot of devices. So the controllers have two ports. They have both the um, in and the out as well. And then the last thing we have, I'm gonna have April put that picture again, is the command bus ports. And the command bus ports are the ones that we use to communicate between devices, okay? Those are the ones that send out the data from one device to the other. That allows for that network, that community of brains that works together to maintain and back each other up, to, you know, to make sure that if one device goes down, the other devices in the collective, as we call it, um, are able to take over and make sure that your system is working correctly. So now the big difference between the devices is which type of ports they come with. That's pretty much it. That's the big difference. So those are all the ports that we have, but based on the control that you're looking for or the, the control that, you are, that you're looking at, you just have to ask yourself, it's like, which ports does it come with and which ports do I need? Okay, but let me emphasize again, just like everything, just like the we they've spoke before, is that each control can be its own brain. It can do its own thing. It can run a tank by itself. It's just a matter of which ports come with each control that allows you to control what you need, what fits your needs. Okay, so like my little my cousin, I call her like my little cousin and you know, she's, she's almost, you know, I'm not gonna say the age, <laughs> but my little cousin, she has a small 20 gallon tank. Now, does she need a control four for a, for a 20 gallon tank? Probably not, you know? So then the choice is, do you go with a control two or a control excess? Well, you know, then you ask, then I asked my cousin, Jenny, I said, Jenny, okay, so what do you have there? Do we have, what do you wanna control? Where well, my lights come with an outlet you know, and my heater comes with an outlet. So, you know, I just need something to be able to tell me the temperature and the water. So I said, okay, Jenny, then your choice is an excess because you don't need to connect a pump to it. You don't need to connect the lights of it. All you want to do is connect a temperature probe, a water sensor probe, and then maybe a leak probe. I'm, I'm sorry, a sensor, sensor. I mean, I did myself, a temperature sensor, a water sensor and a leak detector sensor, all right? And then run the system, okay? And it can run it. Now you may ask yourself, it's like, well, how do I drive pumps in there? Let's go back to that image that April just showed us. And a control excess comes with four sense ports. But in addition to that, it can also control up to eight Wi-Fi devices, including the upcoming feeder. So does that look like a device that doesn't control? No, it looks like a device that controls. It looks like a device that it can do the job depending on what you want. All right, okay. Say, let's go back to the control two now. So my cousin Jenny comes back and says, you know, Carlos, I want to control my, uh, my automatic uh, top off pump. You know, I don't want to have another power supply. Okay, so now we're talking about, okay, Jenny, you want a pump and you want the top off pump. Well, that means that you're going to have to have a drive port because you have to have a drive port for a pump. Well, that rules out the excess. So for her purposes, then the best would be the control two because it gives her the two sense ports. It gives the temperature sensor and the water sensor and it gives her a drive port for the pump. In addition to that, the control two can also control up to eight Wi-Fi devices, including the upcoming feeder. So you see, there's no right or wrong. Like Dave said, there's no right or wrong. It is what you want and what you need at that particular time. 
that's pretty much what it is. That's the big difference between them. So let me emphasize on that again, because I know there's been a lot of rumors out there that say that the XS is just a module, the XS is just a sense box. It is not, it's a full-fledged controller. The thing about it is we're giving you what you what people ask for. Now, obviously we can't give everybody what they want, but what we're trying to find is we're trying to find, you know, requests, group them together, say this many people ask for more sensors Okay, so let's give them sensors. More people ask for drive force, let's give them drive force. People ask for a pH and an ORP probe, let's give them that. So we're trying to give you different choices that you can grow on, all right? And also fit that price point, you know, it's just the cost of entry. Exactly. Uh, everybody has six or $800 to throw down on a controller. But exactly. $800, now you're in the system. And if you li decide you like it or wanna grow with that system, now you can purchase these individually. So right. this, you know, 100, 159. So you can see how the you can evolve with this control. Here's the big difference, guys, is that yes, I have a big system where I need multiple controllers. If you add up the multiple controllers, the Wi-Fi strips and everything, everything adds up. But I have a large system. But the big difference is that if I have a 20 gallon tank, why should I have to spend $700 or $500 to on a controller for a 20 gallon tank just to do my temperature and my um, yeah. ATO Out. and my outlets? Why should I have to do that? I don't have to do that. So that's why we thought about it. It's like, you know, that there isn't a controller out in the market that would be inexpensive enough for a beginner you know, for somebody to do that. Now, you know, granted, what's the life of, what's the life of the, uh, of an average hobbyist in this hobby? I mean, it's just like anything, you know, it's like two, three months. And then, you know, a lot of people fall off because they, they get busy or maybe that's not what they want. And only a few percentage of people move on to, you know, continue and get, get, get like we do with bigger tanks and bigger everything. But why at the beginning should I have to spend $500 and make this huge commitment financial commitment to the system when I don't know if three months from now I'm going to be using it or not. Right. How about mm -hmm. the art, Carlos, where people are saying uh, with the hydros, uh, it, it's just a basic entry level. We can't do advanced things. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know what? We'll, we'll cover that on... I think we, we should we should definitely cover that. And then, you know, in our next segment, we're yeah. going to cover that part. And we're also going to cover uh, we're going to start ask, answering some questions from our viewers in here. But before we do that, let's have a word from our sponsor. Everybody, thank you for watching again. All of us, we, we love having you around. I want to say hello to Alex Sadowski. I want to say hello to Jeff Benedek. He's here. Little Ricky, how you doing, buddy? He's right here as An Ancient City Reefer. Uh, we, we love you having you guys in here, and it's always a treat to have you. And thank you for your support. Thank you for your loyalty. It's always a lot of fun. If you like the show, if you like the workshops, please don't forget, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell, hit that little um, a thumbs up. We are streaming live on Facebook and also on YouTube. So please, if you like it, just 
hit the thumbs up. That way, next time you uh, next time we do a live show, you'll get a notification. Um, also, don't forget the latest information can be found at forum.coralviewhydros.com. So, Dave, um, uh, on our previous segment, we were talking about we started talking about the um, basic, and it can do it can do much things. And yes, you know what? I have heard that too. So I want to clarify that. Um, um, we can do, the hydros can do very complicated things. Actually, the hydros can do m far more complicated things than the other controllers can. But the thing about it is that we make it look so easy that it just doesn't look that complicated. So I take that as a compliment, you know? Yeah, you know, we take that as a compliment. There and do lines of code or have somebody send it to you and, and try and translate it and it, uh, it's, it's a different, different concept uh, that once you, you know, try to your mind around how we've done this. Absolutely. And the way, I, the way I look at it, Dave, is that we, and, you know, not to blow our own horns or anything like that, but we really worked hard at bringing 2021 technology and usability to the aquarium hobby instead of using something that, has, that was developed about 15 years ago. And it's just been kind of like, you know, modified little by a little, but not really bringing out the technology the way it is. I mean, it's like there are far more. Trust me, guys. In the in the in the world in the in the world, there's far more things that are more complicated than an aquarium, and there's software out there that has made it very very easy. Yeah. So um, um, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to take that mentality and bring it into the aquarium by creating this hydros. Um, uh, app that makes it easier where you can code without having to code. Yeah. All right. So it is very, 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 very easy to use. Um, um, I have a question from Jeremy Rodriguez. Are you able to use the sense or pro ports to trigger an action? Turn on or off an outlet on the power bar if the sensor or pro port detects a reading outside of normal range. Jeremy, that is a fantastic question. And yes, we talked about, you know, I kind of um, I kind of talked about just the inputs, you know, the, the, the inputs of the of the devices, but I never talked about what to do. And yes, that is what makes us a controller and not just a monitor. That's a big difference. So a monitor, Jeremy, would be something that just tells you, hey, the temperature is 75 degrees. That's it. A controller is something that says, hey, the temperature is 75 degrees. You've told me to turn the heater on, so I'm going to turn the heater on. That's what it is. So yes, Jeremy, that is a very, very good question. And yes, you can do that. You can do, if the water sensor says there is no water, if the water sensor is, the water level is below the water sensor, then you can tell it is okay. If the sensor is dry, turn the pump until the sensor becomes wet. And when the sensor becomes wet, turn the pump off. That's it. And we do this with a very easy to use, easy WYSIWYG, you know, and we've done some um, workshops with uh, the clear and we've done another, a couple of other workshops. So if you want to go back, also big shout out to all the people that have been watching them. We're getting big reception on this workshops and they're fun. Uh, we're, we have a blast to do them. But yes, Jeremy, check out our previous uh, workshops and you'll see all that information and we go over how to do it. And it's very, very easy, you know. Um, it says, Wendy, I would love one at the control two or excess price point. Um, um, I'm thinking. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Harkins uh, is talking about a pH or P probes with the. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, you know what? All I can tell you is that. Um, so Harkins Aquatics is asking for a control two or a control excess box that comes with a pH or P probe. All I can tell you is Same that <laughs> there, or P probe, no probe, no probe, Dave. Those are uh, probes. Yeah, temperature would be a sensor. Um, yeah. All I can tell you um, um, is that there are a lot of products that are just this. I mean, we are right here about to come out with a couple, with a few more products that you're going to be very happy with. They're running on Dave's tank and they're running on this system right now. So if you're just if just hang in there for a little while, um, uh, we'll have them. Remember, guys, we are only four months old. We're tiny little babies, you know. We're tiny little babies, and uh, just give us a little time. We you know you we cannot come out of the gate and 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 
zero to 60 is not as easy as it seems. Okay. The roadmap, the roadmap looks good though, you know, yes. Been, yes. you know, three years prior to this in development and, and, uh, yeah, it's believe me, I would love to have it all out, but, uh, it, it's coming. I, I yes. So let's go to control four. Now, what is the difference between the control four and the control two? So I'm going to ask April to bring the control four picture. And as you can see, kind of the control four is our overall, the most robust of all the control four of all the control units because it has everything. It has four sense ports, so you can put temperature, water detection, leak detector. It has two probe ports, so it has pH and ORP, and the probe ports are both. So you can connect two pH probes, or you can connect two RP probes, or you can connect one of each, it doesn't matter. It comes with two drive ports, it comes with two zero to 10 volt input ports, ports one in and one out. And in addition to that, it also can control up to eight Wi-Fi devices. Now, the amazing thing about it is that when we first started creating this product, we thought that that was going to be the it, that was going to be the probe that the control that that took care of everything. But as time went by in, in, in the development, we noticed that, you know, Dave and I are like, um, you know, I can't control all my devices with the control four. So then we had to grow. And we we sat at the table and said, how do we do this, Dave? Do we just have people get another control four? Or, you know, and, I'm, and we're like, no, that's not right. You know, that's that, that, that shouldn't be right. So let's create something else that people could bring in at a more affordable price and only buy what they need. So if yeah. somebody needs more sense ports because they have more devices, more things to input, then we'll just buy an excess. You know, if somebody needs more drive ports, then buy the control four, the control two and add it to the control four. Okay. Then on the app, they become one entity, even though you have two separate devices, they can become one entity where you see, so you will see all the sense ports, you'll see all the drive ports, you'll see everything as one. So you don't have to go in the app. You don't have to go to one controller and the other controller. You can just go to one entity and it has everything in there. So it lets you grow on it. So yes, the controllers, if you have a large system, they can add up in price. But just like anything in life, you don't have to buy it all at once. You can buy something first. And then if you need more, then you buy something else. If you need a little bit, then you keep adding to it. Instead of having instead of having a 20 gallon tank and having to spend five hundred dollars on a system where half the things you're not gonna need. Yep. All right. Um, uh, let's see. What if you need more pro ports? Yes, Greg Carroll. Hey Greg, how are you, man? Um, uh, at this point, if you need more pro ports, you you do have to go with the control four, a second control four. And that's not something that we wanted to say undo. I mean, let's be transparent. It's not the best answer, but it is the answer right now. And I'm going back to, again, this system and Dave's system, there's a lot of hardware in there that you guys, there we're just ready to, to send out. And I'm telling you, honestly, guys, if it wasn't for the pandemic, the, the hardware would be out already. But the pandemic has thrown a big monkey wrench on our, on, on, on the um, um, supply chain. And yeah, product yeah, in the supply chain. chain so supply chain, yep, it's been challenging. Yeah, so we are four months old, guys. Again, we are little babies. Just give us a chance. I know we sound like we've been there forever, um, uh, but no, we're four months old. So please give us a chance, and you'll and you'll see what we got there. You'll see that it's gonna be a it's gonna it, it's it's a good system. And I know we've been saying that for a long time, but it, you know, let's just it's tra full transparency. It's been COVID pandemic. It's just it's just pushed everything back by not weeks, but by months. All right. All right. So any more questions? Let's see what we got here. Um, uh, let's see. OK, it says Jer Jeremiah, Carlos, I am ordering a large K down here in Mandeville, Louisiana. Hey, there you go for my stream and then it ran out of the screen out there so i'm sorry i can only see so much on the screen and then it just keeps going out off the screen there you go thank you uh four tranks on my hydros i want to automate as much as possible yes that's great 
And uh, this makes it easy because then you can keep the four systems separately, or if you want, you can have four controllers putting them all into one single, um, um, one single um, uh, interface, you know? So again, controllers, excess, control two and control four, they are all full-fledged controllers. They're not modules. They're not, they're not um, uh, something that will not work by itself. They work by, they work together. All right. Now let's move on to the wave engine. Yeah. You know, cause I've heard, you know, I've had a lot of questions asked where people say, that people confuse the wave engine with the control four because they look very similar. All right. So the wave engine is a flow specializer. It's a flow master. It, its primary job, its primary function is to create flow on you, in your tanks. That's what it is. It is, I, I, it is, it was not designed to run a pump by uh, 24 seven at the same speed. You know, it, it's, it's designed to take a pump and ramp it up, slow it down, you know, jerk it around, move it reverse, move it forward. That's what the wave engine is meant to, to do, okay? While the control is a more of a general purpose device that can take care of sensors, so it has inputs. You can attach a temperature probe, uh, temperature sensor. You can attach a leak detector sensor. You can attach a pH probe, um, um, but you cannot do that with the wave engine. So there's a stark difference between the wave engine and the control. One is the wave engine is a flow specializer. And while the control four is more of a general purpose controller. Okay. I think it's, uh, you know, when you're talking the wave engine, Carlos, it's, it's how does it incorporate into this hydros uh, world? And, you know, in our aquariums, we we're, we're have so many um, power heads and return pumps and it, it was the original you know conception of it was is we can have this one device that's directly powering four pumps off of these mm -hmm. drive ports so yes. now you eliminate the power supplies and the native controllers from those pumps so right there you are significantly decreasing clutter um, I don't know about you, but I hate all these wires and, and the mess to yes. try, where am I going to mount all these power supplies and the cable management in, in our hobby is, is a serious burden. And we yeah. wanted to try and, and do something that would um, put all of these pumps into a single device, control them as well as monitor them. And that's, uh, that, that's what we've done with the wave engine. And now we're to the point where we're about to move the wave engine into what we call a collective. And maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit um, and, and tell them everybody what we're doing with that, what this collective world looks like as we maybe lead into our, our next uh, workshop. And what we yes. Want. So, yeah. Um, um, you know, without saying too much, yes, the the um, the wave engine will be coming into the collective. Um, that is something that is already in the works. That's something that is actually running on this system. Uh -huh. It's already in the in the system in there, but it's not ready yet. We'll have that ready soon. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to bring the wave engine into the collective and uh, have one entire entity for everything for your control four, your control excess, your control two, and your wave engine. You know, so that's gonna be make it make it fun. And on our next the on our next um, show, what we're gonna do on our next workshop is we're gonna talk about collectives, and that is a big thing because I know we've I've had a lot of questions asked about the collective, how to create a collective, what is a collective, you know, how to how to add devices to the collective. So that is our next workshop that we will have. So make sure that again, if you like the show, you um, hit the subscribe button. 
and you make sure that the bell or the little thumbs up because we are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube and we do this every couple of weeks or sometimes every week it depends you know um, uh, but we know you know what we let you know via Facebook or social media but if you're not a big social media fan um, uh, and you're not a big social media fan like Facebook then you can always head over to YouTube hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified right away when we are live so that's what we're going to do next workshop. I'm going to answer a couple more questions. Hey, um, why, uh, don't touch, uh, why don't we touch on our, our Wi-Fi outlet strips and and some of the, the misconception with that and and just, uh, you know, how it works. And maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit, Carlos. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Um, um, the Wi-Fi strips are – that's one of the biggest things that people – the biggest misconception we have. And that was the – biggest point that we wanted to bring into the hydros world when we decided to draw this again remember how i talked about bringing 2021 technology to the or 2020 technology to the to the hobby and wi-fi is one of them at this point in time wi-fi is incredibly reliable it is no matter what other companies tell you you know um uh, wi-fi it's how it runs the world so if you have how about just with that said, Carlos, the difference between internet and Wi-Fi? Can yes. You so, a little bit for us? so one of the biggest misconceptions we have is that the if the hydros device, if you lose your internet, you can't your hydros device will stop working and it won't be able to tell your you know, um, uh, your Wi-Fi strip that, you know, turn off the heater because the temperature is too hot or things like that. And the biggest difference I want to make sure that everybody knows, and I was going to cover this next week, but we can cover this now, is that internet and Wi-Fi are two completely different things, okay? The Hydro's device communicates with the Wi-Fi strips via Wi-Fi, okay? Does not communicate via the internet. So what that means is that if your internet goes out, but as long as your Wi-Fi is still there, the communication between the control and the Wi-Fi device is there. And it will, the control will continue to tell the, the Wi-Fi device, hey, turn off because the temperature is there, or hey, turn the pump because the water sensor is, 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 uh, is, is dry. It'll continue to do that. If that you lose- a power issue? Yes, if you lose your power, then it's not going to work. But then again, guys, I'm not sure if any controller out there that will tell you that continues to work even there's no power. If they do, they're lying to you probably. Okay. All right. So, yes, Wi-Fi uh, and Internet are completely uh, different. US, a USB, uh, what is that, the, the, power, the computer power supplies and put it on your router as a backup. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And you know, that's what I usually do. And that's what I did with mine. I have a, um, if I lose my power, <laughs> I still have internet at home because I put my router and my modem and a, um, um, in a backup UPS backup battery that I bought from Amazon for like twenty twenty five dollars. It's just mm -hmm. that's it. And if I lose my power, my router and my modem stay on. Therefore, I still have internet access. I still have internet access. And you know what? When there's no power, there's not much to do except sit and wait. So I sit and wait and browse the internet. <laughs> yes. 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 So the Wi-Fi is a way to communicate. To, uh, the internet is a way to communicate to the cloud. But the Wi-Fi is how the devices communicate with each other. All right. Yes, and Greg Carroll, I thought, Greg, thank you for saying that. I think Greg said it. Wi-Fi is reliable. The problem is the crap routers that our internet providers include that are crap, and that is absolutely correct. Yeah. It is a well-known fact that your internet providers give you the lowest price router they can the give you. They, they yeah. buy them in bulk. They buy them in bulk, and they just give you enough to provide you what you paid for. And here's something that they, people don't know, sure. is that when they guarantee you the speed, they only guarantee you a speed if you connect via wire directly to the router. <laughs> Not many people doing that. That's it, that's yeah. it. So if, you, if you're Wi-Fi, they don't guarantee the speed. So if you test any device, if you go to a speed test on your computer, on your laptop that is Wi-Fi or your phone that is Wi-Fi and do a speed test, you're not going to get 
what they promised you. And if you call them, that's when they'll tell you, well, no, we don't promise you that. We promise you the speed to the router. That is it. Okay, so that's one thing that you need to that that you need to be informed. The internet speed that you're paying for, the 200 gigabytes or whatever you're paying for, is to the router. So the quality of the router, especially Wi-Fi, is going to depend how much the speed. So you're paying $200 for 200 gigabytes of internet or whatever the speed is, but then the internet service provider gave you such a crappy modem and router that the Wi-Fi is so bad that you're only getting 50. Okay, so that, yes, Craig, you made a you made a, a you you hit it right in the nail in the head of the nail because it is it is one thing that people don't know about is that the, most of the times the router is the problem. And I always say, even in my when I answer support portals about the hydros, I said the first thing I do is, did you restart your router? Because anytime you have a connection issue with the Wi-Fi with the hydros. The, the hydros is yellow or the hydros is breathing red, there usually is because the router crashed. So if you restart your router, most of the times it'll bring back the hydros, you know? So um, yeah, where can I get 200 gigabyte service? Exactly, I know, I was like, uh, there's only a few cities that have it with Google Fiverr, but um, you know, it was just an example. It's just a hypothetical. Just trying to trying to get my point point across. How do you uh, how do you like the the Wi-Fi strips, Carlos? If you're running, you know, you need a controlled outlet in another room or to, to oh. turn on. They're fantastic. They're they're great. They're fantastic. I mean, I, I it, you know, my wife doesn't like me for this, but I actually have a outlet up in the third floor that has a, there's a little light connected to it yeah. and if there's an alarm in my tank the little light goes on in the bedroom so i know that there's something wrong you know because that's you how it is it happens you know, it's gonna be in the middle of the night it, it, it happens you know hey we all know everybody here i don't even have to make a uh, a survey or something we all know that shit happens sorry part of my yeah. french when you're not at home or yeah. when you're sleeping that's when it happens. It never happens when you're staring at the tank. It only happens when you're not there. So, yes, um, um, you know, Jeff Benedict said a dedicated wireless ac a wired access point is uh, to the router is what you did. And technically, guys, if somebody asked about a mesh. I think Connor Sloan asked about a mesh. And yes, mesh are not bad, guys. It's wireless meshes that are the problem. Wireless wireless meshes are a big big problem because they're most of the times they're not configured correctly, and what they are is they're incredibly incompatible to devices that have only that can only connect to one band. Okay, so a wired mesh is not something. A, a wired mesh is perfect. That's what you want to create. A wired mesh, not a wireless mesh. So our wife, our our Hydro's devices are compatible with meshes. They're not very compatible with wireless meshes. Okay, that's the big thing. Um, let's see, Adam Johnson. I'm so gonna do this. Yes, you. I'm sure you are, man. That is awesome. <laughs> okay, here's a uh, reefing with O. Oh, the best compliment I can give the Hydro's is that it does the job in the background with nothing from me it doesn't doesn't annoy me i sometimes forget it's there and that is the biggest compliment i have you know i know danny is one of our users danny is uh danny's a, one of our friends here and also a big hair uh, heavy coral hydros user and during the texas rollouts where he was losing power multiple times a day and you ask him right now danny he's on the and the forum uh forum.coralvhydros.com. If you ask him, he'll tell you. He had so many times where the power went out and came back on. So many times when the internet went out and came back on and his Hydro's devices came right back up. Ask him. I'm not lying. Just ask him. His name is Danny. He'll probably hate me for, for getting flooded. Him. But, you know, ask him and he'll tell you. Every time the Hydro's devices came back up and worked. You know, I'm not sure if I can say the same thing about other controllers about that, you know. So anyway, guys, thank you so much. I know this was not a very, it, this was an unconventional workshop because we really didn't show you anything like how to, how to you know, do stuff. Uh, but, you know, Dave and I and the entire Coralview team felt that the, 
we needed to do just a show on covering the differences between the different control the control devices that we have and how they are full-fledged controllers so again yes there's a lot of chatter in the in the internet that the hydros device is not as cheap as the other controllers you know but the, unfortunately in this world most of the time the answer is it depends mm -hmm. and i know some folks out there don't like to hear the word it they don't like to hear the answer that, that starts with it depends but you know th this world is not black and white so yes Let's see what that if, looks like in the next uh coming yeah. month if, if, if yeah exactly. Fully, exactly. Finally. if so. you have a large if you have a large system then it's probably going to be it, it's not going to be as you know it's probably it's going to be cheaper but it's not going to be as cheap as other devices but if you have a small system or if you have a startup system or if you're trying to find a controller for your daughter's 20 gallon system then it's way cheaper than, than it would be to 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 spend five hundred dollars for another controller just for a twenty gallon tank. So it yeah. depends. It depends. Okay. All right. So thank you so much for watching. I want to say thank you to Dave for being our my gracious co-host in here. Um, I want to say thank you to Jeremy and April. Jeremy, our graphic designer, he does such an awesome job. April, our producers. You know what? April, we wouldn't be able to do the show without you. I also want to say thank you to Wendy or everything Wendy or everybody's Wendy. I know, <laughs> you know, she's always answering questions. I, I, you know, we love her here at Coralview, one of the best decisions we've ever made. So thank you so much for watching. If you like the show, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit that little bell. We stream live on Facebook. We stream live on YouTube. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you get the, you get the, uh, sorry, you get the, um, you get the, I'm sorry, you get the notifications. And I think I forgot something, Dave. Yeah, I just wanted to do a little shout out to the stores, you know, I like to, oh. you know, we here, we want to support these stores that are, that are supporting us and, and give them a shout out. So uh, Aquarium Depot in Canada stocking hydros now. Uh, Gallo Reef in Mexico. Hello, hola. Uh, fish <laughs> in, Canada, in Costa Rica. Wow, thank you, Costa Rica Fish Center. Uh, Top Shelf Aquatics, our friends in Orlando, thank you. Been a big supporter and we appreciate that. Um, Aquatic Sea Life in, in here in Louisiana. Want to give them a shout out. Not Very nice store, as well as Aquatics by Nature right here in Mandeville, Louisiana. Another very nice store. Uh, stop by and see these guys. They really uh, would appreciate the business. So we thank yes. them. Yeah, thank you so much. It's, uh, thank you for the loyalty. Thank you for the um, thank you for the for the help. And yes, Greg International. That's right. Um, um, yeah, we're we're moving out there. We're moving out there. People are tending to like the they're tending to like the app. They're tending to like the system. And um, we have um, a few updates coming up soon that you guys will like. So again. Next week, we're going to cover collectives. So it's a big show, especially now that we rolled out the excess. I know a lot of you guys have ordered your excess and you're adding it to your control two or your control four. So you might be asking, is like, how is the collective? So, you know, come back next week. We will talk about the collective. Technical. I think it'll be a pretty technical show, Carlos. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. new because, yeah. again, Dave, there's no coding. It's There's true. no coding. There's no coding. No, it's going to be quite simple. Actually, it's going to be very simple to do. And once you do it, then it just works the same as every other device. It becomes a virtual device. Nice. It becomes a virtual. But we'll go into details about that. So a little bit later. I mean, we've gone a little bit longer than we usually do. Um, uh, but yes, thank you again for watching. And uh, we will see you next week.